Congressman Ron Paul has created a loyal following with his end the Fed message. Now the Texas congressman's bill to audit the Fed, Federal Reserve, that is, is being put to a vote tomorrow in the House. Earlier, in an exclusive interview, I asked the congressman why it's necessary to audit the Fed. Well, we have an obligation. They're very much involved in dealing with a lot of money. I think they're bigger and more important economically than the entire Congress because they dealt with $15 trillion during the uh, crisis a couple years ago, and they want to do it in secrecy. And uh, we have an obligation in Congress under the Constitution that we're in charge uh, of monetary policy, and we shouldn't uh, just defer to uh, a group of individuals who work in secrecy. Well, so, Congressman, uh, that, if I could, you know, I have great respect for you because you have studied this for a long time. You've written about it extensively. You called for an end to the Fed. But in frankness, they don't operate in secrecy. They issue a weekly balance sheet. Uh, the Federal Reserve chairman has press conference after press conference. The members of the board speak to the press. Uh, they put out an annual fi financial statement that's audited by an outside group. What is it that you hope you would get from an audit that you don't have now? Well, about five years ago, we'd have known that they were involved with LIBOR interest rates being fixed. We'd know everything they do when they talk to other central banks, when they decide that they will have currency swaps, when they will bail out banks and what they do. So we have a right to know this. And this, this bill did not interfere with monetary policy, and that was misconstrued in the debate. What it, what it does is finds out what they do and all the correspondence, why they pick and choose, who gets bailed out, why do some corporations get bailed bailed out and others don't. Why does the mortgage, the person who in the mortgage doesn't get help? They lost their job and they lost their houses. But some of these big guys that did the derivatives market, they got bailed out and all that stuff was dumped on the taxpayer. And I want to know why well, they did this and what were the circumstances and what was the what were the uh, communications between these groups? Congressman, uh, the Federal Reserve Chairman has said that what you really want is to understand and know the conversations that go on around monetary policy. And forgive me for this, but I think the last thing in the world anybody wants to see is Congress involved in monetary policy. You guys can't pass a budget. Uh, $15 trillion worth of debt, most at the hands of Congress. Uh, why should we give you the financial brains here? You have two problems with that. One, I'm not asking for that. We're, we're not going to change anything. They can fix interest rates. If people still believe that we need fixing interest rates like LIBOR and fixing the Fed fund rate, no, we wouldn't even touch that. But the reason is, is it's the law of the land. It's the Constitution. We have the absolute responsibility to deal with monetary policy, and you can't turn it over to a group of individuals in secrecy. They say, well, we don't want to politicize. Well, what about bailing out a company and lending another the company fail is that political they deal uh, they they collaborate with the Treasury Department I mean they're not bailing out companies right now well, do you, how do you know you don't know exactly what they do uh, on the discount window and, and and we would know we would have this and they would ha always have to have the responsibility that uh, we will know what their communications are and uh, yet they can still fix interest rates they can still print money they can do well, all these I, you know, Congressman, I, I know a lot of people out there love your message, but they also feel like if you guys had the printing presses, those presses would never I, stop. They would go 24 no, wait, hours wait a, a day. Don't put words in my mouth. I'm not for that. They would do that because the Constitution doesn't say we can print money. The Constitution says we can mint gold and silver coins, and that is all. all and right. We can't print money, and oh. you're right. Congress would spend the money just as much as the Fed does. Even but more. The Congress, the Congress would pass it out to maybe the mortgage holders and the farmers. They would be a little bit more populous. I'm not for that. Don't tell all me right. I'm for that. I, I, wanna I want to get to a couple other issues to... quickly because the the Republican National Convention coming up. My understanding is that they have helped you secure a place to speak. Tell me what you make of that. Are you happy with uh, the role you're going to be playing here? Should you be doing more? Well, I don't know what I'm going to be doing yet. We know that we have this place, and they removed their restrictions. They had uh, restrictions placed on it, and uh, when they knew that we could use that and have a rally, they said that they would uh, remove their hold on that piece of property. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I was, I was pleased with that. And uh, you haven't endorsed Mitt Romney yet, will you? Well, I'll wait and see, see what happens at the convention. 
Congressman, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks so much for the conversation, particularly today with your bill on the floor of the Congress. Are you predicting victory? Um, no, it's going to be closed because it's under suspension. We won't vote till tomorrow. We have to get two thirds of the vote. And uh, so it's not guaranteed. We uh, will have to All wait right. until after lunch tomorrow. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time.